Well, hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to Fridays with Sandy. That would be Sandy Kreisberg, founder of HBSGuru.com, who is here to give us an assessment of an interesting candidate. Uh, his name is Odineo, and he is uh, an investment consultant with Fidelity Investments. He has also worked for T. Rowe Price before that. He is uh, a photography person uh, who actually is quite accomplished. He won the he runs a business. Book. He's not a he's not a recreational photographer. Isn't no, he right? won the so monochrome uh, photographer of the year in two thousand and twenty one. His GPA from Howard University in physics three point seven. He has a GMAT of seven twenty. And his target schools are Wharton, UVA, Darden, Harvard, and Columbia. He ultimately wants to uh, go into investment banking. Sandy, what do you think? Say hi, uh, Odineo, and uh, introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. My name is Odineo. Um, uh, a lot of the work has been done there for me. I am an investment consultant. Well, what are you doing that. now? Uh, so currently, I am an investment consultant uh, with Fidelity, so working on the wealth management side of finance and in the future looking to make that pivot over to the investment. Okay, let me side. ask you this. You, you Fidelity Investments, that's good. Investment consultant. Tell me what, do, do, do investment consultants, your peers at Fidelity, do they apply to business school typically? No, no. So that uh, business, a business degree isn't required for progression on this side of things. Um, it's just becomes uh, working with higher dollar values, um, more family money, uh, and helping. Manage. Okay, so if if a business, if your peers typically do not apply to business school, why are you applying to business school? That's a question they'll that you've got to answer. You really got to you got to answer that by alluding to your goals and how you plan to get there. So. Yeah, you want to pivot into investment banking, and I banking is a field that uh, likes to hire MBAs. Well, that's a good something. Oh, okay. What's, what's your answer? Clear, that, state that clearly. Yeah, so the goal is to pivot into investment banking, and I felt as though private wealth management was my way into the finance world, and the MBA could give me the skills necessary to make that pivot. Good. What what job would you want after? you graduate from a uh, business school? Uh, so I'm looking at uh, investment banking at a, uh, ideally a big firm, someone that recruits from uh, one of the schools that I would, I'd be looking to go to. So we're in, um, if I can get into a JP Morgan or honestly, any so you want to be a firm. schmuck investment banker, like a lot of other people, right? It's no, it's, well, no, the, it's it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just that that's what a lot of people do. Yeah, that's but, fair. You know, it's it's actually um, you want to work really hard. You want to work 70, 80 hours a week and make a lot of money. <laughs> I wouldn't put it that way. I would say I'm I, I, here's here's the way I'd answer the question. If they say, "What do you want to do after uh, graduating from business school?" I would say my long term goal is this. And after business school, I'd like to join a firm like X or Y. And then after a couple of years there, possibly through a rotational leadership program, I'd like to get a second job. And ultimately, I'd like to wind up here. Okay. okay. This is a question I ask every week. And I say that I ask it every week. And nobody has given me a good answer yet. Could you give me some role models? Like whose job do you want in 20 years or 30 years? So these aren't necessarily people. I'm, I'm not sure how, how famous they are, but I have a- They don't have to be famous. Are, just just tell me whose job you would want and why. Uh, so I, I know a couple of people who are, own their own private equity firms. Um, they're local, they're smaller businesses, but uh, they really show me the power of, that trajectory, um, starting through business. School What's their back? That's very interesting. What you got me here. What does it mean to own your own private equity firm? Uh, the example that I'm using in particular, this gentleman does what he calls, uh, he'll take a business and he'll find another business that has an interest in that space 
and will connect the two in order to grow the original business that he's partnering with. So um, uh, he's... Is he a uh, third party or does he take a, an ownership interest in the first business? Uh, does not take an ownership, uh, does not take ownership, so third party. Okay, uh, John, maybe you could help me here. Is that private equity or is that something else? Or is that just being a- well, I, would, I would find someone in- Average in, counselor. <laughs> I would find someone in investment banking who you might admire uh, and stay away from PE at the moment. Um, it's, you know, it's just, just, it's a highly selective field. I usually have to have peak experience to, to get into it or at least investment banking experience. Uh, and and it's, you meant you have to have investment banking experience yeah. to get into PE. Yeah. This is and critical. It, we say it every, yeah. no, I want to, I want to say it again because we say it every week. In 99 out of a hundred cases, private equity firms hire in people with investment banking experiences. It is very rare to graduate business school and your next job is with a private equity firm. If, you're if that it is true that your next job is a private equity firm, there's usually a story behind it. That's by far not the common uh, occurrence. Also, so, as you mentioned private equity, venture capital or hedge funds, uh, it does raise something of a red flag uh, if you haven't had any experience in that field before. So just saying investment banking and you want to work from Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Goldman, City, whatever, uh, and then having a couple of role models who are leaders in that field uh, is kind of what you want to do. I can't stress the importance of this. It's worth doing homework on this. It's worth looking up. It's worth going to the websites of those firms it's worth looking up people. It's worth knowing what they really do, who they hire. Do you, do you have friends who work for the firms that have those positions? No, not currently. You see, that, that's really significant. So you've got more homework to do. I mean, you're, an unkind way of characterizing what you're doing is daydreaming. Yeah, I, I, I don't mean that as a... I, I just mean that... To, shake you by the shoulders and say, you got to get more informed. You got to get centered in this. You got to know a lot more. Uh, Understood. Good. The other thing is, you know, you, you won this award in 2021. And if you put down that, you know, you had that internship in photography and you start talking about this, I think it's important that you show that you've, you know, been somewhat distinguished in it. And the fact that you won the Monochrome Photographer of the Year Award in 2021 uh, is very important to be putting on your resume and in your profile. Uh, because obviously photography, portrait photography is important to you. And, uh, and because of those gaps in the resume, when you were doing it, you just need, you need to make it clear that you're distinguished in that field. Uh, so there's no question uh, that's raised about it because they're going to assume that you couldn't get a job or you were fired or something else um, if, if you don't play it up the right way. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, I agree with yeah. that, but uh, we don't want to overwhelm you with advice here. So I'm going to add just one more thing. You've got to make it crystal clear that you want to work, that you want to be an investment banker and that you want to work for a private equity firm. And you need, that's why you've got to do research. You've got to know firms. Like they, if, if they said, name three private equity firms that you admire and why. You've got to be able to answer that. It's but critical. What, but I'm telling you, don't mention PE. <laughs> because, you know, it'll be a red flag. Here's what schools don't want to do. They don't want to uh, admit you and enroll you uh, and then not be able to fulfill your dreams. So if, if you say private equity, they may think, oh, wow, that's a stretch. It's going to be really hard for us to get him that kind of job. And he's going to leave disappointed. Schools do not want to do that. Uh, John, I, I, I'm not so concerned about that. Uh, and sorry, we're giving you a little bit of conflicting <laughs> advice here. Oh, it's good. What you, need is a, it, it, what you need is to be able to answer this question. What job do you want after business school? What job do you want after that? Where do you want to be at the end of, you know, at the height of your career? Can you answer that now? Um, not succinctly. 
Um, okay. I don't worry about it. That's why you. That's why you're talking to us here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you want an investment banking job at a at a uh, highly admired and respected firm. You're willing to put in the work and learn the job and advance in it. And then maybe ultimately, long term, you might want to get into private equity. And then the reason for that, you should have a reason for that, that that basically allays any concern that you're only after the money. Like you believe in our financial system, you believe in capitalism. Uh, but where, where, where is this coming from, John? That, that's assumed, all right? You think so? Uh, yeah, unless he says something contra. Right. right. If you say, I want to make a lot of money, that's, that's not good. You don't have to say it. it it's not a sin. We're, the, the guy's applying a business school, not divinity school. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you okay. think his chances are? What do you think his chances are? In, in, um, and I, I think his GMAT's fine at 720, don't you? 720 is perfect. It's, it's something that they can rely on and say, this guy, you know, 720 is a score they respect. Okay, this guy's not going to be lost. The 366 uh, at Howard. Uh, in physics, STEM in, phi, in physics and Phi Beta Kappa. That, that's important. The Phi Beta Kappa. How, how did people get selected to Phi Beta Kappa? Was it grades alone or a mix? Uh, it was grades alone. So my... I completed the physics portion of my undergraduate degree junior year, and I had a very strong GPA and started exploring grad courses senior year, which really challenged me. Um, and that is when my GPA took a bit of a hit. I would write that as a note on your application, that the reason for the decline in my GPA my senior year was not a, a lack of attention. It was the opposite. I took the most challenging physics courses available. Yeah, that's good. What's the Elaine Locke Award? So that came around uh, earlier on. So I started out with a 4.0 GPA, uh, freshman and sophomore year, uh, beginning sophomore year of college. Okay, um, so you're a rare situation where your grades are high, but they actually decline. Most people, their lowest grades are in their first year when they're still finding their way. So you've got to write a little spiel about that. The, the, you know, the decline in my GPA over my four years was brought about by uh, my desire to take uh, the most challenging physics courses and not by uh, me goofing off. Are you looking for scholarship money or not? Ideally, yes. Yeah. And if I need to improve that GMAT score, so that is the first uh, attempt. Um, at the GMAT, so I'm definitely willing to try again, study harder, and raise that. Do you, did you study, do you think you could do better? Uh, I I do. Okay, John. Does does he, a 730 really buy him anything, or does uh, it? I don't think. Let me really say does. this: a 740 buys you something. Okay, of course it does. That's something they would just stand up and take notice. These schools love high GMAT right. scores. And after all, it's only a couple of a couple of correct answers. I mean. Yeah, it's ridiculous that 740 means something uh, for you. Well, are you first gen uh, student, a I graduate? I am. Okay, that's another positive. There you go. You got to make make clear that people know that. Were you born in Nigeria or the U.S.? I was born in Nigeria. Okay. How old were you when you came here? I was six years old. Okay. Uh, uh, this is a real important question. Are you a U.S. citizen? I am now. That's good. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, the schools you're applying to are very selective. Uh, Wharton, Harvard, Columbia, and Darden, for that matter. Um, but what do you think, Sandy? What are his best shots? His best shots are obviously the... Like you, like you, you are going to get into Darden if you can convince them you want to go there. Okay, so what you should do is visit these places, make friends there, take the tour, and when you apply to Darden, you say, "What?" When I visited Darden, 
I was really impressed by this. And I took a class in this and this, and that really blew me away. You've got to make that application speak to why you want to go to Darden. You, you've got to show them the love. I think you'd get in there. I think you'd also get into Harvard. Columbia. Yeah. Let's work up the pike here. I think, I think you'd get into Columbia simply because you'd get in if there were nothing special about you and you just worked for Fidelity and had the stats you did, you'd be a strong candidate. But you have a lot of pluses, including, uh, um, you know, uh, being Nigerian and a U.S. citizen. Uh, the Nigerian yeah. background is something they really value. STEM background. Uh, and a STEM, STEM background. 720 GMAT, which is solid. Yeah, and, and a 366 from yeah. Howard and people and physics. So you're not, you're not someone who's taken the easy road. Yeah, totally. Okay. I think at Wharton and Harvard, man, you got a chance. You're just, they, 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 view, they would view you as a, as a plus to the class profile. 25%, 30% chance, 40%. What do you think? Yeah, 30, 40%. Yeah. Uh, at, at, at Wharton and Harvard, uh, which is as high as it gets. Is there anything that you'd recommend? So outside of clarifying the story and understanding and making it clear why I want to pursue the degree, is there anything that I should be working on in the meantime to make that, that chance a little bit higher? At, at Harvard and Warden. Well, I'm going to tell you, take the GMAT again and get a 740. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> and it would also it, increase the life. It's likelihood. true for everybody. It's particularly true for you. You've got, you've already got the uh, extracurricular side solved, man. You, you just do a lot of stuff. You've done a lot of stuff. Uh, and it's, you know, it's too late. Uh, you already do this. Uh, I will say one, one thing I think you need, you need a fidelity story uh, that puts you into, you know, a successful role. Uh, don't you think so? Because he's from a background that isn't, you know, isn't generally the track into an elite MBA program, right? Right. Uh, because you're, you're meeting one-on-one -on -one with individual clients out of a subsidiary office so I, I think you need to have a story about that, that, that puts you well, in a Why you're doing life. it and what you've learned from it. You don't, don't yeah. complain, don't explain. Uh, just, just say what, 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 you, what you're doing and why it's important to you. Yeah, and I think to the point that uh, Sandy just immediately mentioned what you learned from it. I think that's really important. And so, how it's influenced you. Yeah. Working at Fidelity was really influential. It, it made me see the power of, uh, you know, helping people through, uh, you know, being a financial advisor. It, it helped me see the power of people who were starting businesses and how I could help them. Those were very powerful experiences. Okay. And that's kind of what I want to do. Yeah. Let's go through this one more time. Where, where do you see yourself? Where, where do you see yourself? In your at, at the height of your career, what's your goal? At the height of my career, um, I well, I want to understand how financial systems work. That's what I want to get out of this, and then I want to leverage that knowledge to make the most impact that I can for the communities that need it. Um, yeah, that, that, that you got to be more specific. You go, what I'd like to, at the height of my career, what I'd like to do is run an impactful small private equity firm that helps minorities. A role model to me is AJAX Incorporated. They do this, this, and this. Another company I admire is this. And the road to that would be after business school, I would uh, start at as an investment banker to learn financial, you know, the financial basics. And then I would hope to join a, a large private equity firm, and after and for my third job, I would try and make contacts, find backers, and start a private equity firm of my own. You've got to be able to tell that story with specifics. You understand? Yes. Thank you for here's that. A, here's a, here's another little piece of advice. 
that might be helpful to you. On LinkedIn, there's something called the HBS Black Investment Club. That's for HBS, obviously, Harvard Business School. And these are alums from Harvard who are in, it, who are in the investment banking field. I would go uh, in there and look uh, for, you know, a half dozen of them and um, maybe reach out and say, hey, you know, you're an active applicant to Harvard and you want to just uh, talk a little bit about their careers and how Harvard helped them. Yeah, just net, just reach out and you, you network with them. Networking is something schools admire. And if you can do it, they'll say, yeah, good for you. We admire people who are capable of doing that. That's a tremendous tip. Say that again, John. What's the organization? HBS Black Investment Club on LinkedIn. And in fact, I just pulled up uh, one guy who was an investment banker at Goldman Sachs. Then he became an investor at both the Carlisle Group and another firm. Uh, so he's he's done the track that you're thinking about, right? Investment banking first, then then PE later. So talking to a guy like that, who you have identical goals with. Yeah, you write that guy an email and you tell him what you're doing and you ask if you could talk to him for 10 minutes. Definitely. Okay. Shoot him an email. Thank you. Yeah, right. I think we... Well, look, good luck to you. Giving you an avalanche of advice. Uh, you, can, <laughs> you can play it. It's on tape. You can play it back. Here you go. Yeah, and I have a page full of notes. So thank you both. Thank you both for your time and making this platform available. You're going for places, like man. Here, here's, okay. here's the other thing. You're only 25, so you're applying at uh, like the early window, or early part of the window. If for any reason you don't get into re where you really want to go, you could still wait another year and reapply, just FYI. And if you're really eager to go now, you're going to get into uh, at least two of the four schools that you're targeting, maybe three. And if not, you know, Cornell's a great place for investment banking. Um, so is UNC at Chapel Hill, frankly. Man, I think your chances at Columbia and Darden are real high. I think they're very good. They're very, you just very got, good. You just gotta you just gotta make clear to them why you wanna go there. Yeah. Good luck to you. Hello. And thank you. Thank you. Good luck on your MBA journey. This is John Byrne Quotes. And Quant, you've been watching Fridays with Sandy.